thinking a lot about the chase to get somewhere and what we need once we arrive. It just seems so strange. I can write my books, lose 20 pounds, buy the perfect home, but then what? I know we talk about core desired feelings, as Danielle Laporte puts it, and figuring out how you want to feel, but I don't seem to get it. I have this fantasy of being wealthy, and that sounds gross. But the desire is freedom to buy a big old home, walking the streets of my neighborhood. It's always been a dream of mine since I was a little girl. I want to see the world because I am in awe of it. I want to write books because my imagination is active all the time. And creating characters and worlds is my second language. I want to spread love because I overflow with it. What does this equate to? I want to leave my job because it feels like punishment. I want to pay down debt because it feels like handcuffs. I want to lose weight because I want to look in the mirror and feel sexual. Sensual. <clears throat> I want what, some, what so many others want and wish for me. It is the work to get there that throws me off because I don't have clarity on what the work is. I have a purpose and it lingers and it pokes me but refuses to reveal itself fully. I want so much for a soul enlightening, enlightening light bulb to go off over my head and suddenly it all makes sense. I spend way too much time in the clouds when I should be getting my hands dirty. All right, guys, welcome back to the podcast. You know who I am. I'm Heather Chauvet. That was a beautiful um, little written email that was sent to me by one of my current um, clients, and I had her permission to share it because, one, you can tell she's a real writer just by her words and how she expresses herself in the world. And two, it's a very legit question. We all have that. We all have curiosity and, you know, why isn't it so easy? Why can't I figure this shit out? Why, 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 why? And it doesn't matter if you're a mother or not. Um, it's not all about parenting. It's about you. You and the life you want to be living. Parenting is just the relationship. It's just the co-creation with another soul, with another human being. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about what I just read, core desired feelings, getting to where you want to go, becoming the person that you want to be, and feeling like you're not doing the work. Before I jump in, um, it is Wednesday? Wednesday. Friday, depending on when you are listening to this, Friday, June 15th at midnight Eastern Standard Time, um, that is when the price goes up. That's your deadline. So if you're interested in Teach Your Kid to Meditate Live, I'm doing a live round starting July. If you register before then, you're going to gain access um, to the old material and you can start right away. But what we're going to be doing is in July, you're going to get new content. Um, you're going to be getting two new modules that I've never um, shared with you guys before in the Teach Your Kids to Meditate process. I'm going to show you the energetic time management and helping you get in aligned with how you want to feel. But the whole concept of Teach Your Kids to Meditate is helping you get a refreshing approach um, on your child's behavior and really understanding what's going on with them. So if you want to get um, the discount and all of those bonuses for this round, head on over to teachyourkidtomeditate.com forward slash program. It's $2.97 until tomorrow night, and then it goes up to $4.97 US. So check that out. So let's dive in. Okay. I don't even know if you can hear everything that's going on around me. This is nature. I'm in British Columbia. We're camping in our RV. We have a, I think, well, tomorrow we leave. It's gorgeous here. Lots of nature. And we have to remember that we are nature. We're connected to it. And typically with um, our cultural lifestyles, we're very disconnected, very disconnected to ourselves, to others. Let's talk about doing the work. I sit here and I watch these woodpeckers, I watch these animals, I watch these insects, and they're constantly working, constantly. 
But you know what? They don't have an ego like we do. They don't compare themselves to each other like we do. And that's where we get lost. So in the evolution, and yes, it takes patience, but in the evolution of who we want to become, we often get these visions, right? I want to write a book. I want to lose the 20 pounds. I want to make this money. I want to move. I want this type of relationship with my child. I want this type of relationship with my partner. I want a partner. Uh, Whatever that is for you, realizing that the journey there, that's where the magic unfolds. So people think, when I quit my job, that's when all this freedom will come. When my debt is gone, that's when all my freedom will come. But the truth is, it's in the moments, right? So on your morning walk or your morning meditation or in your journal or on your way to work, it's taking a few moments and asking yourself, how can I shift my mindset to freedom? They say, if you want wealth and abundance, you have to act and feel like you're already wealthy and abundant, that is what abundance truly is. And I've experienced this in my own life. I've experienced both, where you have more money than you've ever had in your entire life, and you still feel like it's not enough. And then when you have less, and you feel an overwhelming sense of abundance. So what you're after, the house, the car, the money, the debt freedom, losing the 20 pounds. It's the feeling behind it that you actually want. And I'm not saying don't go for it. I'm not saying don't lose that 20 pounds. I'm not saying don't, you know, start to create debt freedom. But what I'm saying is through the journey, while you're continuing to go after these goals, part of your practice needs to be, how can I feel free now? How can I change the story around my debt? What has this debt given me, right? What is this debt giving you? Because then there's those people that have become very restrictive. And they're like, nope, 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 nope. Can't do this, can't do that. And then they live in this little bubble and they always feel like there's never enough. But maybe they're debt free, right? But they're still feeling like there's never enough. And it's because of the mindset, the mindset of lack mentality. So shifting the mindset to abundance. I say abundance, you can say growth mindset, you can say whatever you want. It's shifting it to the positive. So example, you have a $20,000 credit card that's maxed out. And you're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I can't handle this. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I have like crazy allergies. So I'm trying to breathe through that. Um, So you have this maxed out credit card. You're like, oh my God, I can't handle this. This is ridiculous. And then you start focusing on abundance. What is this credit card giving you? And let's be honest, if the credit card was a shopping binge and you don't even know what was on it, you look through your credit card statement. Well, this gave me what I needed to hit rock bottom. This gave me the opportunity to have my aha moment. This gave me the opportunity to reinvest in myself, reinvest in my business. This gave me the opportunity to buy food for my children. I bought clothes to put on their back. It's not the negative in front of it that matters. It's not the negative in front of it that matters. It's you. It's your mindset. It's how you energetically show up. I was thinking about this the other day, about physicians and therapists and my naturopath and how, you know, we look at something. Example, if I go in there, I'm like, okay, I got an autoimmune disease or, you know, I got these symptoms or whatever. And they're looking at the symptoms and they're like, okay, let's try this. Let's try this. Let's try this. Let's try this. I thought this is what I do for people and their mindset. Okay, try this. All right, that worked. Great. Awesome. Let's add this. Okay, let's do this. 
This is a process, guys. It's not just saying positive affirmations and all of a sudden a light bulb goes on. I've had to literally sit there. Something I'm working through right now is loving myself as is, my physical body as is. And this is a journey. It's a relationship, right? For so long, so many years, I, uh, it's not that I hated my body. I just clearly didn't respect it. I let it go. I neglected it. And um, now I'm learning to love it. And now that I'm doing that, I'm looking in the mirror going, ew, gross. I don't like this part of me. And then for a little while, I was battling with, well, Heather, this should be enough. You should be okay with the way you look because it's society's expectations of, of what you should look like. And then I was like, no, no, it's not society's expectations. This is not how I want to feel in my body. I want to feel stronger and I do want to look different. And that's okay too. Because nobody else can tell me what I should look like in my body. Healthy or not, it's my body. So it takes time. But I'll catch myself looking in the mirror, catching myself looking at a photo and going, ew, gross. And then I go, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? And I shift the mindset. And even in that moment where I'm like, okay, I haven't achieved, quote unquote, achieved the ultimate goal that I wanted to achieve, what am I going to do about it? What are the action steps that I'm going to take? And more importantly, how in that moment am I going to love myself? How in that moment am I going to love myself? So I go, I love you, Heather. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I've started to have these conversations with my oldest because he is going through puberty. And we talk about body image a lot because he'll mirror and project a lot of his body stuff onto me. And so we'll talk about it with each other and I'll say, I don't like this about me. And he'll say, oh my God, mom, don't say that about yourself. And I go, but you just said that about yourself. Why, why am I not allowed? Well, it's different. Well, why is that different? Why is it okay for you to put yourself down, but I can't put myself down? And I do this from an educational perspective to try to have those conversations with him and go, see the love that you see in me? That's what I see in you. How you see me as whole and perfect, that's how I see you. And so learning to see that in ourselves is really challenging that we all have shit. So the people that you look up to, they got shit too. And if they don't say they have shit, they're lying to you because everyone's got shit. But this mindset thing, this little inner voice, it's an illusion, right? So some things that I've had to do over the years is compartmentalize, which meaning if I am having a moment and I need to Um, get out of my own head, get out of my own way and just take action. I, I literally close my eyes and I visualize, um, that nasty part of me, that mean girl that's just coming out going, you suck. You can't do this, blah, blah, blah. You're a failure. Are you this? And I just close my eyes and I pretend that she's just not welcome in my house anymore. So it's like, I'm pushing her out the door. I'm like, thank you for coming. Go on a little vacation because you're not welcome here right now. And I close my door and I lock the door. And then I sit there and I ask myself, cool, what do I need to do now? And I get out a pen and a paper and I just write it out. And I sit in my journal and I go, what do I need to do? Okay, daily exercise, meal planning. How do I want to feel? Alive, great. Well, if I'm beating myself up and I don't have this nice conversation about myself, is that going to make me feel alive? Probably not. So then I get out my pen and paper and I write, Dear Heather, I love you because. I love you because of your determination to continue growing even when it gets tough. I love you because of your smile. 
I love you because nine out of 10 times you are a good person. So stop telling yourself you're mean. I love you because yada, yada, yada. And I just go, 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 go. This journey is about loving ourselves. That's it. It's pretty much what life is about. The journey is, it's a return to love as Marianne Williamson calls it. Returning love ourselves. Because when we love ourselves, it's, we project that out into the world. So we will always feel like we're never enough. We're not doing enough. But we just have to simply ask the questions. Cool. This is my goal, right? What do I need to do to make it happen? You can write your books. You can lose your weight. You can do whatever you want to do. But remember, from point A to point B, point B meaning when your goal has arrived, that's the journey. And it sounds tacky as hell, but I'm telling you, the magic is in the journey. There have been many goals that I have accomplished. And once I get there, I'm like, this is it. This is what I've been like, you know, wanting my whole life. And I'm like, no, it's not what I've been wanting. It's the illusion of what that's going to give me. So if you want to be sensual in your life, if that's what you're craving, how can you be sensual now? If you think writing your book is going to make the big difference in the world, what is it about the book? What are you craving? Is it connecting? Is it making an impact? And how can you do that now? Is it telling your story? Is it just the journey of creativity? Because right here, right now in this moment, I don't care if you're driving to work, if you're running somewhere, if you're walking, if you're listening to me in your kitchen, I have no idea. If you're taking a shit, I don't care what you're doing. All I care is that you know how magical you are. That's all I care about. So in this moment, ask yourself, how do I want to feel? Pick it. Pick the feeling. Alive, energized, not angry. What's, what's the opposite of not angry? Happy? That's kind of a big one. I'm not a fan of happy. Content. Great. One action step that you need to take. One baby action step. You don't know what that is? Do some jumping jacks. Move your energy. That's why I'm such a huge fan of working out, guys. Yeah, I'll, you'll get a nice ass, but that's like a bonus. Mentally, you're going to feel off the charts fucking amazing. All right. I'm going to end my ramble. The wind is picking up. I just want to say thank you, as always, for listening. And uh, if you are interested in Teach Your Kid to Meditate, get on it. 297. Um, after the 15th, after Friday, it's going up to 497. It's going to be worth every penny, by the way. Um, but you're going to have weekly Q&A with me, updated content, the additional modules, and this is a live round. So um, it's probably just, the price is going to keep going up and up and up. So don't hang on too long. Uh, if you want to check out the program details, what it's all about, go to Teach Your Kid to meditate.com forward slash program. And if you don't go to forward slash program, you're going to end up uh, with the free Teach Your Kid to Meditate conference. So teachyourkidtomeditate.com forward slash program. And if you have any questions, send it to us at support at heatherchauvet.com. Okay, the wind. Oh my gosh, I'm getting blown away. Talk soon.